the young, raw recruits of 924 Troop. Training to be Royal Marine Commandos and just 20 weeks away from the front line in Afghanistan. Who's it going to be? Get up! Get down, guys! Get down! But the troop have already lost 25 recruits and are struggling as individuals and as a team to cope with the heavy demands. Tonight, I join them as they're taught how to survive behind enemy lines. Getting captured is not fucking an option. The people we fight are not interested in taking prisoners. If you get caught, you are fucking going to die. Keep striking all the way down. And I watch as they get to kill for the first time. All right, he's ready to go. Today, the recruits are going to be dropped in the middle of Dartmoor for an entire week. Here, living rough, they'll be deprived of sleep, food and warmth. They'll be pushed to the limits of their endurance. But at least they're getting a ride out there. Flying in a helicopter to get me, lovely. Lovely, what more can you ask for? Yeah, this should be really good fun. <laughs> Better than going in a coach. Um, both got their advantages. Coach means you can get an hour's sleep. <laughs> and we're not going to get much sleep, are we? <laughs> OK, fellas, listen in. The Dharma is quite a harsh environment to operate in. You start to see the signs of hypothermia, <laughs> numbness, dizziness, lethargy in your friends, pale, clammy skin. Um, notify one of the members of the training team. But, fellas, that's why we fucking train you there, isn't it? So you can have a get on Dharma in the pissing rain in the middle of the night, then fuck me, you can pretty much do it anywhere. The system we employ in the Marines is called the buddy-buddy system. My buddy and I'm his buddy. We've got to look after them, be it in operations or be it in a pub brawl. You know, you've always got to be thinking about your oppo because when it gets more serious and you're in operations, constantly in the forefront of your mind is, where is my buddy? He's been there for me through thick and thin and now he will look after me. I think that's why people are so much closer in the forces, you know, like a brother almost, because you entrust people with your lives and that's what you've got to do. You've got to trust people so much that you'll do anything for them, likewise they'll do anything for you especially when the shit hits the fan and you're getting shot at. In Afghanistan, another Royal Marine was killed this week. That's 20 who've died in the fighting in Helmand this year. So is NATO making any progress? Afghanistan is to come. Right now, though, it's the wilds of Dartmoor, some of the most treacherous and inhospitable terrain in the British Isles. For three days, they practice navigation skills, taking it in turns to either read the bearings or to count every step in order to measure the distance they travel. Check pace, how far have we done? 700 metres. Change over now, then. If they don't start working as a team, they're going to find the days ahead very, very tough indeed. Hello, Terry. Hey. Enjoying this? Lovely scene. <laughs> Can't say about my shoulders, but lovely scene. <laughs> <laughs> What the recruits are learning here on Dartmoor could very well save their lives when they go on operations. Yeah. This and the survival skills they've already been taught. Get your little fucking snack pack out or whatever. If you've got one hit at making this fire, you want to make sure it works, don't you? What else do we have in our survival tin? A bit of cotton wool, all right? Yeah. Frontline commandos carry the most unexpected survival aids. What we're going to do is we're going to rip open the old tampon itself. OK, these can be a bit, a bit troublesome to get open. However, a bit of brute force tends to do the trick. See how much cotton wool's coming out of this? Everyone happy with that? That's why we carry them, lads. The bits of kit. OK, what we've got is, is the old uh, Swedish fire still. OK, it's got 12,000 strikes in it. Obviously, now it's just a question of getting the cotton wool to catch. And it's purely just an upwards motion. Huh. There you go, you've got fire. <laughs> Obviously, now we've got our fire, we're going to start doing the old cooking from it, boiling water. Also essential in a battle zone is the ability to move over rough ground carrying heavy loads of 100 pounds or more. Marines are famously expert at this. They call it yomping. Get a move on, fellas. 
It's just a marine skill and we prove it time and time again. The Falklands, 90 miles in three days, carrying all their kit and equipment. And the, the Argentinians, on their battle plan, ruled out that angle of attack because they said no one could get from there to there. There's no, no physical way of doing it. Q, you know, unit of marines over the, uh, over the hill, having yumped 90 miles in three days. And people say, ours. Oh, there's no point now. You've got helicopters, you've got transport, but sure as eggs are eggs, the helicopters will go down, transport breaks, gets reallocated, and the only way is a Mark One leather personnel carrier from A to B. So that's why I do it. Right, fellas, get a move on. Why is this section lagging behind far more than the other sections? Is it a bit of balls, a bit of grit and determination, yeah? Part of our tradition in the Corps that we yomp places with our kit and equipment. The rest of the troop, about half a kilometre in front of us now, pick up the pace, fellas. But what we've got here is a basic lean to. Right. If I was in Iraq, the survival techniques they're taught have been perfected in the field by the always anonymous special forces. That is your fucking tactical survival shelter when these people fucking want to kill you. How deep is that stuff? That is a shell scrape that you could dig with your hands. Any sort of recess in the ground, if it's just a little fucking dent in the ground, that you could put some sort of roof over flat so that people walking past, that looks flat, doesn't it? And all you do is get in there in the daytime, you lie there, and you're just fucking shit by the side of you, you're pissed by the side of you. Whatever you're eating is scraps that other people have fucking left or it's the old dead fucking rat that's on the floor. You're on the bones of your ass. Once it's dark, you fucking crawl out of it, you fuck off, and you do your night yomp. And the big thing you need to take away from fucking training, fellas, is if you get picked up, forget all the war films you've seen where you get put in a POW camp, they fucking don't happen anymore. You get locked up in someone's fucking house, in their fucking basement, you spend a few weeks getting fucking videoed, and then you get your fucking head cut off. People we fight are not interested in taking prisoners if you get caught, you are fucking going to die. Everyone happy with that? Commandos are trained to deal with any conditions, any weathers, and most of them can be found on Dartmoor. Yep. Struggling a bit. Struggling a bit? You can't see anything. There's nothing around. There's nothing to... There's nothing to go off. And our distance has told us we should be here now. Right then, what I want everyone to do now, have a look at the way the land has gone and the land that we've covered. See where you think you are. OK, who's uh, check navvy? After three days on the moor, with virtually no sleep, the recruits now have to do their first night navigation by themselves. Yeah, Aiming for checkpoints manned by the training team, five patrols yomp into the freezing darkness. Essentially, this is the first time they're yomping on, the, on their todd on their own uh, around Dartmoor. So I'm just counting them out now. But if they do make mistakes, well, they're on their own this time. And they've got to work out what to do and how to get around it and get to the next checkpoint. Whatever you do, stay stay up the arse of the person in front of you, because we're going to get this proper coming yeah, in. Right? Yeah. Okay. We're moving. Oh, you all right? It's pitch black, and the recruits can see virtually nothing. What do you do, Adam? Fuck, you just jumped off that gate and landed right on the corner of that stone. To look at their maps, they use a torch shone through the top of a thumb. Any further illumination would be tactically unsafe. Shit, this is going to get shitty. Absolutely free. Cold and hard. Oh, the coldest I've ever been. It's this. Mm. My shoe is eating into my ear. My shoulders are absolutely killing me. I feel like if I lift another bag and put it on my back, I'm going to fall <coughs> to my knees. But every time I just put it on and just go. Yeah. Let's great, go, great. Let's see where we're stopping. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to double check. I don't want to get fucking lost now. Hmm. Fun and games. <laughs> After five hours, some of it being lost in a thickening night fog, the section make it back just before one o'clock, the cut-off time. You, oh, now it's all about getting warm. <laughs> I'm a tropical man. No use staying cold. <laughs> Nearly two hours after the cut-off time, ten men are still out on the moor. The training team, back from the moor themselves, are starting to worry. I know as soon as it comes to fast light in that crack, let's all find Oh, it probably will do, but like the boss says, we can't take off. If somebody's injured up there now, we can't afford to leave until the first lights are fired. Yeah. Right now, these lads have had no sleep and they are pretty much walking zombies, but I'm going to tell them to dig deep within themselves and find their oppos on Dartmoor. If I was lost in the middle of Dartmoor and I'd broken my leg, I'd like to think that my buddies were coming, regardless if they were tired, cold, hungry and had no sleep at all. I'd like to think in the back of my mind, yet 
Someone will come for me. I have every faith in their ability and they will come and they will find me. You have your day sacks on you with enough warm kit to sustain you on the moor. With ten recruits missing, what was an exercise is now a genuine search and rescue operation. Yeah, what we need to get our friends, though. Yeah, mate, we need to get our friends. In the last ten years, 30 people have died on Dartmoor. Three have been One, Marines. Two, three. Nine, two, four, three. Oh, that was gas, lads. My missus could shout. What were we that. shouting? Oh, oh, fuck me, where are they? You've got all these fucking flares coming up and you've got all those shouting, trying to torches. 924 Troop have gone almost 72 hours without sleep and next to no food. Now, on a mission to find their friends, they're at the very limits of their endurance, but must search for as long as it takes. The following morning, and still no sign of the lost patrol. The recruits, dead on their feet, have been asked to volunteer for yet another search party. I can't afford to take people that have become liabilities. No, no, it's not me. I'm coming. Good. I'm coming. One, two, three, four, five, six. He lives, but I'm coming. The nice thing is talking to the guys here. The camaraderie's started now. We won't be leaving them behind, will we, Corporal? Which is a good thing, because obviously yeah, we do pride ourselves on not leaving anybody behind. Sure enough, water's moving. After an hour of searching, Terry thinks he's seen a movement, but can't be sure. Dot. All right, there's a dot right on the edge of the like, bushy patch. I want you to walk with us in a line, but keep an eye on that, all right? Yes, Corporal. The patrol heads towards the movement Terry thought he saw. And sure enough, they soon see figures on the horizon. But it could just be other searchers. Keep them sweeping for the time being, just in case it's another unit. Close in! It'd be nice if there's ten. It's them, the Lost Patrol. Hope you had a good night's sleep. We've been up all night. Everybody all right? It's an ankle. Black Morgan's doing his ankle. But everyone still... You've got two syndicates, yeah? Go on, tell you. The Lost Patrol had decided, once they realised that they were lost, to bed down for the night. They put up their bivouacs, got in their warm sleeping bags and had a restful night's sleep. Three o'clock in the morning, that was like Blackpool Illuminations. Quite oblivious that their friends were up all night looking for them. Yep, tired now. <laughs> After I found them, started to kick in now, so I'm tired now. Williams was in tears, he was. He's been crying all night. Williams, <laughs> you OK, mate? I'm <laughs> smiling again now. We're safe. <laughs> What'd you do? Two Sleep out. Two nights survival X. <laughs> we return to base, where everybody wants to welcome back the Lost Patrol. Royal Marine style. Good effort, fellas. Nice bit of control and aggression. Don't get the anger, get the best of you. <laughs> tap out your Avis, you're going to die. <laughs> One section, never tap out, boss. Grab your dog, get straight on. Chain! Anyone can jump on She's broken, so she can't. She can barely walk. She's all got a guy on the back as well, got a Too much yomping, huh? It's just exhaustion and my feet are just wrecked. These boots are shit. If we have to yomp, Jesus. It's about 7.85 kilometres to our objective. Let's get their ace up. After all they've been through, the exhausted recruits must still complete their exercise. First, another agonising yomp, carrying 100 pound loads. Get a move on, fellas. And at no time are they left with any illusion that this is just a game. Hey, fellas, imagine, yeah, you're in a survival situation. Your troop house has just been blown to fucking smithereens by the Taliban. On the run somewhere, and you're absolutely exhausted. You haven't slept for a day, two days, three days. You are going to be absolutely hooplard. That's when you need to summon your inner strength to work out even which way's north and what the hell is going on. It's a bit of a taster there for you of how exhausted you may well be one day when you're on operations, OK? One night's sleep you didn't get there. My fellas, one straight line, this mate. It's good now as well to transfer. We literally no sleep throughout the night, straight into a survival exercise. The situation there and now, so they're literally fully exhausted, have you seen? You know, I dare say most of them won't have had this lack of sleep ever in their lives. So and also teach them you can sleep anywhere, back of a car seat, taxi rank, four-tonner, coach, plane, whatever. The skill that boot next to you quite well. 
they've come together as a team and they've hunted for their oppos who are lost on Dartmoor. I think that in itself has brought them together. They've never done anything that hard, but now at the end of it, they can look back and go, actually, I could do that again, you know? It's made them stronger. They wouldn't realise it yet. When they're out in Afghanistan in the middle of nowhere and they're going to yomp 20k after having no sleep, they'll be like, yep, I can do that. I've done it before and I will do it. It's that inner confidence in themselves. They know they've done it and they can do it again. And so to the final challenge, a night in the forest with nothing more than the clothes they stand up in. And the only food they're allowed is what the training team will give them. Just going to basically check them, make sure they've got no uh, contraband, Mars bars, cigarettes. No. I can then check all the clothing. They're uh, quite sneaky at times, the way they try and hide things. Pants down, turn around. Yeah. But at least they've been promised a meal to remember. Hello there. Who's going to be eating you tonight, eh? You're going to be cooked up. Yum, yum, yum. Rabbit in my tum, tum, tum. Eight rabbits and eight chickens will be on the menu tonight. But the recruits will be doing the cooking and the killing. Ah, you going to get your neck broken. Uh, look at him. See, look, someone's already tried eating him. He's got half his ear missing. Give it a kiss. I'm hungry right now, honestly, Chris. I have no problem killing anything, no matter how big it is. I'll run it down and kill it. It's sad taking their lives, but someone's got to die for someone to live. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Only the strongest will live. I'm going to rip that rabbit to shreds tonight. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't even want to touch him. Oh, I don't want to kill it. It's because it'll bloody fluffy. <laughs> I'm making a hat out of my pair of slippers because my feet are in bits. Right, welcome to probably the most enjoyable part of the training. Obviously, the, the killing side of it. Uh, we're going to show you how to kill a rabbit and a chicken, skin it, gut it. Well, first thing we need to do is relax the animal, all right? The way we simply do it is just grab the legs and swing it backwards and forwards. The way we're going to kill it then is the stick goes around the back of the head. You place either feet each side of the head, simply pull up. Lay her down, either side, and off we go, all right? And obviously, this is, if I let it go now, this is where the term the headless chicken comes from. All right, say hello to Susie. Hey, Susie. All right. All that happening is there is the nervous system kicking With in. commandos, there's always a gallows humour to take the edge off a moment. You can have a bit of fun if you want. Good old finger puppet. You've got two, you can have Punch and Judy shows. Keep you occupied for the night. We've killed it. What we need to do now is start taking the pelt off. It's got a pelt and then the skin. Simply make an incision, till you can get your fingers in, once you get your hand in. Commandos, perhaps on the run behind enemy lines, must know how to kill animals as a matter of basic survival. And not only for food. Try and keep the pelt intact. You can use it for insulation, i.e. your hats, socks, whatever. And then the pelt just simply comes off. All you simply do then is dry that out in the sun, half an hour or so, and that'll be good to go, ready to use what you want. And here we have Tesco's finest. What we need to do now is get the insides out. Scoop it all out with your fingers. All right, don't be beef. Get right amongst it. Well, you don't waste hardly anything of an animal, all right? What is that? Yellow things. Yep, yolk of eggs. So obviously a good source of uh, protein there. So what do you reckon we could use all this for? Yep, use it as bait for obviously larger animals. You dry it out. That'll make brilliant cordage, so you can sort of make shelters, traps and what have you. All right, my daughter is absolutely threaded with me tonight. All right, when she goes home and finds her rabbits flaming dead. You simply place the, the rabbit over your leg, nice firm strokes, all the way from the arse to the um, ears. The way we kill it is simply a kung fu chop, hold it up in the air, and you're hitting it right there, back of the spine. One chop should kill it. And as you can see there, dead, but just making sure. What's good water source from an animal? Yep, the eyeballs. 80% water. That could keep you going for half a day or whatever. Pull the eyelid back as far as it possibly will go. Put your teeth behind the eyeball. Suck real hard. You feel it pop. Don't chew it. All right, just swallow it. <laughs> What you're going to get is an animal between two people. All right, nurse it like it's your girlfriend, all right? Make it feel at home. Give them a kiss if they want a kiss. 
Loveless. Bet you'd like some grass, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right, start finding a branch straight away for your chickens. And start stroking your um, rabbits. All right. Right, start getting the rabbits on your knees. Over the back of the head. Over the back of the head. Feet either side, keeping hold of the legs, and just oh. yank it up. Keep stroking all the way down. It's all right. I've got his attention now. Give him the good news. Go on. It felt really like... Yeah. I didn't even know the feeling, oh. actually. I'm holding it. That's all I'm thinking of. Oh, Bit of grub, isn't it? <laughs> 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 fucking, fucking starving. <laughs> I want to settle down, I want to get cooking, I want to make shelter, I want to chill out, I want to get back tomorrow. Because my feet are hanging out. I don't give a fuck really for this chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's hot. Not the best. It's all right. We did it ourselves. After a week of extreme challenges, it is, ironically, the one thing that went wrong losing a patrol one bleak night on the moors that seems to have taught the recruits their most important lesson. Well, I was thinking, fuck me, I'm knackered me, I've done this. And I, and I looked at everyone and I thought, they've fucking done it as well. Then they knackered as well. Yeah, it's the same. so I'm thinking, well, that doesn't make me any different. I know he can do what I can do and I can do what he can do. And it, it, it does, you just learn to respect everyone, yeah. really. You have to be one in order to go forward, or else we wouldn't go forward. We have to, like, you know, try and get to know each other best way we can. I'm, I don't know, if, if, I, if I hadn't joined this, what, I might have walked down the road and smacked me up, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think dream. about it, I wouldn't <laughs> think about it. In your dreams. We've all, like, done the same shit, so we have a bit more respect for each other. Well, I mean, if we do go out to Afghanistan... Uh, I can't wait to get out. Oh, out, out to Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, I really want to go out there. Yeah. But it's just... Yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously start, I'm saying I can't wait to get out there now. No serious thing. When it turns to reality, it'll be... Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just knowing that you've left yeah, all your family yeah, out behind for the last time you see them. Like it must be fucking horrible for the lads that are out there. That's the thing, isn't it? You can have all the training in the world, but there's only one thing that will prepare you for that, and that's going out there. Is that the first time you killed anything? Me? Yeah. No, 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 first time I've done something like that. Yeah. Went through yeah,